Cyber criminals are communicating, they're sharing their skills, their tactics, their, their tips and tricks of what they've actually found to work. But for years, we haven't really broken down that level of, of trust that's needed amongst ourselves to say, hey, this is what bad looks like. Why don't you all start to take those learnings and prevent that from happening to your own organisation? Welcome to another episode of Inside Security. I have with me today Sean Duca from Palo Alto Networks. Uh, Sean's the Chief Security Officer for Asia Pacific. And what we want to talk about today is prevention, basically moving from detection, which is a very old uh, paradigm for the industry, toward prevention, uh, because we still see incident after incident hitting the press uh, of breaches uh, and the severe impact on the end user, on citizens from those breaches. And what I want to understand, I think what we all want to understand is what can the industry do to move us from those breaches and move to a world where we can stop them before they even happen. So Sean, welcome. Thank you. What can we do to move from detection to prevention? I feel like this industry uh, is not making the strides it needs to make in order to protect our customers. The biggest thing is definitely we need to change the mindset. The mindset today is definitely around detection and respond or detect and respond. Uh, a lot of the times we've seen organisations have been impacted, sometimes they have actually detected that there was a threat, but it's sometimes a little bit too late. We've seen instances up to 200 days after an attack took place that people are then trying to work out how did they get in, what did they do, what did they actually take? And by then there's material impacts to the business. So I think we need to start changing our mindset to definitely lead with prevention, because prevention is possible. It's really three things have to come together. The technology, the most advanced technology like what we offer today, uh, people, educated people, um, which is sometimes the weakest link in the chain is just users are, they're not malicious, they just don't uh, know what to do in the, uh, in the face of uh, cyber security. And a third thing is processes to bring all those uh, things together. And, um, and working with uh, certain organizations who can educate um, enterprises on all three of those points is to turn out to be very high value. I'm not trying to say that we can stop every single attack out there, but at least start to work on this premise of detecting and preventing anything that is considered a known threat. You say it's possible, but we're not seeing it. We're seeing breach after breach after breach. So if it's possible, why isn't it happening? Cyber attackers have become a lot smarter. They're using machines to effectively attack humans right now. They're sharing their skills, their tactics, their, their tips and tricks of what they've actually found to work. We need to start talking because they are talking and they are winning this game right now. From that technical level, a lot of people are still sitting there relying on legacy security architecture to really try and solve today and even tomorrow's threats, which can't really work. And if you couple that with the fact that people are sitting there detecting and responding to the threats after the fact, well, we're never really going to get ahead of this problem. So we need to become a little bit smarter around having our systems communicate and sharing threat information of what we see. We need to ensure that inside our own organisations, we're leveraging and consuming that as much as we possibly can. So if we lead with prevention, if we start to have a platform approach where your capability and solutions are really starting to align and working together. And we're sharing information, not only inside our organizations, but across the industry, we can start to get ahead of this curve and start to get ahead of the, the cybersecurity breaches that are taking place all the time. Okay, so lead with prevention, great platitude. How do we turn that platitude into reality? How do we lead with prevention? So one, definitely look at your security architecture. If it's not capable, start to work out how do you get your hands around it and start to pull those levers to prevent a lot of these threats from taking place. Start to think about understanding what are considered the unknown threats and how do you reduce that time window? Because granted, we're always gonna see some brand new threats popping up. We need to be able to detect that and we need to close that window and automatically start to leverage technology to provide us some automated outcomes of saying, I've seen it, great, let me do something about it automatically. Fundamentally what we're trying to do is have a very high degree of prevention capability at every point of where the attack has to be successful. So as you know very well in security, the idea that uh, you'd rather play offense and defense, uh, of course, because the defender has to defend everything. Now in an amorphous concept of a perimeter, the attacker only has to get in once. That's true. On the flip side though, for an attack to be successful, the attacker actually has to do a number of things successfully. And what Palo Alto has done is created very high degree of prevention capabilities at every step of the attack chain to increase the, uh, the, the likelihood that you're going to be able to defeat that attack. Once you've got that, your people and your process can start to be aligned to working together and say, 
let me deal with the, the new problem that's out there, just those unknown threats that are popping up. Back to information sharing then, you, you mentioned that technology suppliers need to, need to do a better job of uh, information sharing. Can you tell me about your efforts in that field and what you see the future of, of information sharing being in the industry? I definitely think we're heading in the right direction. So we are one of the founding members of the Cyber Threat Alliance, where we're, we've got a number of security vendors that are working together and in real time we're sharing threat intelligence. Of what we see, we're sharing it with other members that are out there. And we think that's something that we want to keep on growing and have multiple different vendors that are part of this uh, alliance that we're actively sharing information because no one single vendor can solve all the security challenges that are out there. But if we can start to all communicate and share in real time what the threats look like, well then we can start to leverage that same, call it the same data set of threat intelligence. We all innovate and we all create our own capability to prevent these types of attacks from happening to our own customers and our own organisations. Sean, thanks very much for your time. It's been a fascinating insight into the IT threat landscape. Thank you.